Jesus did not come to push religion. Jesus spoke of the heart relationship with God and with our fellow man. Religion can make you look good on the outside, but God cares about what is in your heart. Don't let religiosity lock you into a hard shell and force you to be in a structure that is not you. God cares about your heart above all else. The modern world disdains religiosity. Religion is spoken of by Marx and others as the opiate of the people. It's used to control and to pacify. But not what Jesus is talking about. To understand this passage, we have to go back a few chapters where in Mark 2, Jesus spoke about wineskins. Jesus said, and no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. We don't want an old, dead, stretched out structure. We want a living relationship with God and other human beings. See, Jesus recognized that we need new wineskins to hold a living new wine. Otherwise, we'll be standing in puddles of juice. Traditions become evil when they run counter to God's purposes expressed in the ethical commands of Scripture. Traditions can become corrupt when they're upholding them just to obey. The scholar Pelican astutely put it this way, tradition is the living faith of the dead. Traditionalism is the dead faith of the living. One may compare tradition to the shell of a blue crab. To live and grow, it must shed its shell from time to time. It's not in a rigid structure throughout its life. Until it creates a new shell, the crab is extremely vulnerable. But if the shell becomes too strong and rigid, the crab cannot escape and it dies. Tradition is like that. We need to see how the Pharisees' tradition thwarted God's will and strangled faith. These Pharisees, teachers of the law, regarded themselves as the keepers of tradition, and they clashed with Jesus publicly, protesting that his disciples did not wash their hands. See, you don't clean yourself by washing your hands. The Pharisees expected Jesus and his followers to conform to their standards of piety. They tried to promote obedience of all the people. They wanted control. They wanted influence. And Jesus resisted 
You can either live by rules or by your heart. Christ's way is by your heart. Mark 7, verses 1 to 23. See, there is a hypocrisy that is taking place with these religious leaders. And Jesus is telling his disciples that they must live their lives not by how they appear. They don't want to be one way and in reality in their heart another way. That is the definition of hypocrisy, two-faced. Mark 7, verse 1. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled. They didn't wash them. That is, they are unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing. This isn't like a COVID washing where you use hand sanitizer. This is just a ceremonial washing of the hands with water to fill, fulfill the tradition of the elders. Verse 4. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as washing the cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. See, these are not rules that God set down in Scripture. These are human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. And he continued, You have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, Honor your father and mother. And anyone who curses father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is korban, that is devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your traditions that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull, he replied, he asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach, and then out of their body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. What comes out of a person is what defiles them. 
for it is from for it is from within out of a person's heart that evil thoughts come sexual immorality theft murder adultery greed malice deceit lewdness envy slander arrogance and folly all of these evils come from inside and defile a person But the thing that they wanted, to, the hill that they wanted to die on was washing hands. And Jesus confronts them and saying that that is nonsense. Jesus takes the criticism that the Pharisees are directing toward his disciples. and turns it on them. In the book of Exodus, Exodus 30, verses 19 to 21, it tells that required are only priests engaged in tabernacle service to wash their hands. The law required the priests to regard as holy the portion of the sacrifices that they were allowed to eat. They and everyone in the household could share this food only when ceremonially clean. Numbers 18, 8 through 13. But see, the Pharisees were extending this law from Exodus and Numbers to everyone. Let's just, let's just have everybody do this. We'll cover our bases. We can't be wrong if we get everybody to do it. And not just to temple food, but all food, not just holy offerings. See, they were intending to keep pagan influences that surrounded them in Israel and in Judaism away from their hearts and minds but they set up a, a structure that become, became very legalistic. See, the Pharisees were acting like Daniel by trying to preserve and proclaim their distinctive holiness. They weren't like Mordecai in, in the book of Esther. They were the opposite. Their hearts are far from me. Isaiah was describing the shallow religious lives of the 8th century B.C. Jewish people. They talked the talk, but they never walked the walk. They looked good, but inside of them was death. Holding on to human traditions, verses 8 and 9, setting aside the commands of God. In 1 Peter 2, 5, it says, When we live by external legalistic decrees rather than the spiritual sacrifices of the heart that God demands, we fail. There's only one path to a godly character. And that is by obeying God's word. Anyone who curses father or mother is to be put to death. That's basic Torah law, the Ten Commandments. But the Pharisees were saying... We have a way around that law. You, de you devote everything to God, and then you don't have to be responsible for your parents. Everything that you have, you make korban. It's God's. 
but you can also use it for yourself. So you have complete control, selfish control, over the things you said you gave to God. It's hypocrisy. We don't know if it was done deliberately or accidentally. Jesus wasn't saying which one it was in this situation. The people knew in their hearts what was really going on. They were not taking responsibility. They were not loving their parents or their families. They turned the law against Jesus' disciples, but they didn't want it turned on them. And Jesus is saying that the Pharisees were doing the same thing, maybe worse. And he's reminding them that nothing outside of person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. And he asked the disciples, are you dull? Can you not understand what I'm saying? See, Jesus declared that all foods are clean. Some foods might make you sick, but all foods are clean. You can eat anything. It doesn't make you holy not to eat pork. It doesn't make you holy to not to eat something else. He is declaring all foods clean because it is from within that evil thoughts come. It is the heart, the spiritual center of a person is the source of sin. And he gives a vice list. It's the heart. Tradition is given a place, but it is not the center. It becomes dangerous when we think that by performing the right rituals, we are right with God. We need to respect religious principles, but we must at the same time make certain that our traditions stem from Scripture and not just from human reasoning. How we do the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, communion. Paul gives bare-bone understanding of how that should happen. And that's what I read every time we celebrate communion. There isn't to be hypocrisy. You're not trying to look good or religious to other people. The internal heart determines external conduct. And yes, we are all sinners, and we continually need God's forgiveness and strength. But we are transformed by the gospel, and our lives have to be further transformed by the renewing of our mind, by the Holy Spirit, and a godly mindset. It tells us this in Romans 12. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve 
what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. See, washings of hands may seem to be enough to be clean before God. But what God wants is for a change of heart and a change of mind and a sense of confession and asking for forgiveness when adulteries, thefts, coveting, murders, malicious acts, or deceit, or treachery, or licentiousness, stinginess, slandering, insolence, foolishness, immoral, senseless thoughts come into our mind. It's an ever-existing battle as long as we live to act right and to think right. And the tendency of the Pharisees was to withdraw from the other people around them. They didn't want to be around unclean people. There are groups of Christians who have that kind of sanitized understanding of themselves, that they are above temptation. But when we are light, we can be with people who are dirty and have problems. St. Augustine said this, light, even though it passes through pollution, is not polluted. Jesus displays his, his power when he touches a leper, when he touched a woman with a flow of blood, when he touched a corpse and resurrected it. He is not made unclean, but instead he cleanses and restores to life. The Lord told Samuel regarding David, God sees not as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7. 1 Kings 8, 39. See, baptism is should, is, should be done in a certain way. Celebration of the, whole, uh, of the Lord's Supper should be in a certain way, but it's not a technical way that one church has and another church, it's remembering what Christ did for us, his body and his blood. We are to live with purity of heart. How do we look at other people and other things matters. If you're, you're not looking down, you're looking up, thankful to God that he has cleansed you and given you the strength to continue reaching out and being a light and being where people need help. Jonathan Swift wrote Gulliver's Travel, and he satirized the pettiness of the Lilliputians. It wasn't the big picture. It was the details that they were trying to get everyone to do the same way. There was a war in this world over whether an egg should be cracked at the big end or the little end. Roy Pearson comments that God meant for the church to get mixed up in the messes and with people who have messed up lives. 
it is a fact that sometimes the church neglects the real function. We should be more like chimney sweeps, where we go into the, what is dirty to clean it. Cleanliness is not next to godliness. Dirt is. Dirt, pain, sorrow, prejudice, injustice, and treachery. Jesus is like those who want to run the church for those who do not yet attend. See, we're not trying to keep people out. We're trying to meet needs so people want to come in. How do we include them into the family rather than trying to find ways to exclude them? Paul had an impact on Christian missionary practice when he advised the Corinthians to eat whatever was set before them. Don't ask questions. Was it sacrificed to idols, this or that? And told the Romans that no food is unclean of itself. Quit judging others. Quit putting a stumbling block in their way. Learn to live in harmony and build up one another rather than walls of separation. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 5. See, true worship involves the whole person, heart, soul, and strength. Religion can make you look religious, make you good looking on the outside, but God cares about the inside. You can either live by the, the rules or by your heart. Either way, you're going to fail and you need God's continuing grace. But Christ's way is the way of the heart and reaching those who need the forgiveness of Christ as well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you want us, not us to be religious, but you want us to have a real relationship with you. Lord, you know our strengths, you know our failures. Be with us. And Lord, may we walk by faith. May we love you with all of our heart, mind, and strength. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.